So good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's Sky Tonight. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Yo, yo, Jason. <laughs> Hello, mate. So uh, I'm sure you agree with me. What a great thing that we received recently, voted for by the readers for our award. I'm not sure if you've got it with you. Have you hidden it? Or is it back? Say again, sorry? Our award. Have you got it there with you or have you given it back to me? Oh, there Whether it is. you should ask that, it's right by here. There it is. Nice. See that? There you oh, go. That's very nice. Do you know what? We stopped winning awards, didn't we? Because we refused to encourage our members to vote for us because we were giving our database away. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did. Uh, and, we did. And, 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 and so when we received that, and it was a really nice surprise to, to know that our, you know, the readers have voted it, uh, it, it makes it much more, much more, uh, more to yeah, us. Yeah, it was and things really. I mean, obviously, a lot of companies do it in a clever way. So they collect your email address and everything else with the things. It's all a part of data marketing and things really. But we just refused to do it for years, and hence we didn't win awards. <laughs> So no. yeah, but, well, we won them in the first few years, didn't we? We were creaming up all the time, um, yeah. just through a natural people uh, kind of doing it to us and everything else with it. And then they stopped doing the um, best training provider through several competitions and everything else with it and things really. But uh, no, really tough, uh, really tough with that. We run a very small team and keen team here. All the uh, masters and things give us all their time for free and things. Really try and give you guys as much as we can for as little as, as, as we can. But we are a numbers game, so please keep telling your friends so we can actually do what we do. Uh, we love what we do, but we also need funding to be able to do it. And if it wasn't for the likes of the membership and our sponsors, everything else with it, there's no way the academy could continue and things really. But uh, yeah, we're ten, we're ten years old, and in our tenth year, we won a prize, so it's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it was a really nice sort of icing on the cake, if you like, on on the birthday cake. So that was really good. Uh, yeah, brilliant. you know, speaking about awards, we we should actually do a night a webinar on awards. I think uh, looking beyond the photo critique and things, really, actually, you know, preparing for perhaps panels. If people are putting submissions into organisations or what to look out when they're entering the award, what's the difference between a photo critique and an award and things really, even looking at like the camera club scoring me mechanism and, and so on and so on. I think that would be a good one. Uh, can we wait till later on in the year though? Because I think you've jammed me solid for webinars. Uh, yeah, it's a good idea and I will put it on the to-do list. But yeah, you're busy at the minute. But uh, no, I like that idea. It's a really good idea. Okay, mate. Uh, well, look, I know you've we... got a load of new webinars coming up soon as well with different photographers from around the world haven't you so I, have uh, indeed. I look forward to hearing about those all as well. to be revealed within the next few weeks on the site so watch this space yes we've got some great cool. photographers joining us uh, Mark before we get into it let's just do a quick recap about what the guide to light is all about really and what, what sort of sparked the series and why we're doing it yeah the complete guide to light series is um, spawned from me kind of not having the time to write any more books for a while uh, but I still wanted to do something. Uh, obviously, one of the reasons I, uh, we began the Photographer Academy, once called Photo Training View, was that even though we were making training videos and we were selling training videos at the time, we realized that, you know, best value for money was to actually try, uh, uh, join a streaming site. We were one of the first, which meant we were kind of breaking, uh, breaking technology and kind of really limited on what people could actually watch with us and our streaming quality and so on. But we soon realized that, you know, it was nice to do the, um, the kind of the educational on the video, but also some people like a, a kind of a written uh, element and things really. So um, from time to time, we did little guides and so on. Obviously, we've got the magazine now as well. But I decided that it was about time that we kind of looked at a, a something free for the members in our 10th year. So around about third quarter, so um, into August, uh, sorry, October even, um, we'll be producing from um, all the slides that we've been doing, all the kind of the techniques that we've been talking about, we're going to be uh, creating a free giveaway um, uh, to kind of give away to our members and things really. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot of work being done into it and things really. But the reason that we was, I was doing it was because that um, we're writing our own little book as an e-book giveaway and things really instead of actually doing things. So it was just a good way for us to prepare all the different chapters as we're going along. Uh, perfect. Okay, mate, as normal, I will give you the screen. So you should be getting that request now. And just while we do that, to remind you, any questions, queries you have, guys, pop them through the question panel. I'll ask them where appropriate. Mark, I can see the screen. I can hear you. It's all yours, mate. Thanks, Jay. So uh, tonight is all about shooting dance. And again, it's not about 
dance photography, even though it obviously is, um, but it's about how we're using light within the dance photography. Um, as far as the pose and the animation, the kind of how we capture and so on, it's, it's, it's a different uh, um, uh, webinar, but uh, we'll kind of talk a little bit about that tonight for you as well, so a little bit of a, a kind of a little bit of info, uh, kind of commercial on that and things. But tonight we're looking really at the lighting and how to best capture the actual dance and things really. So specifically, um, when we're talking about capturing the awesome, I've, I've always been a fan of dance. I always thought I was a pretty good dancer until my kids took the mickey out of me and said I was a, uh, um, a dad dancer. Never nice to be called that. Um, but basically, um, I've always enjoyed photographing dancers um, right from the beginning, uh, before I began as a professional photographer. So while I was in school, there was a couple of the young um, girls that I was doing A-levels with that were also doing dance and so on. I got a chance to shoot with them on locations on the beaches and a bit of fun and blah, blah, blah. And uh, again, it really kind of spawned my pa passion off. Uh, when we kind of, uh, of where, where possible, we turn everything into a monetization because obviously the word professional means that everything I do is putting food on my kids' table years ago. So as much as I was doing personal pro projects, I also had to find ways to actually convert a personal project perhaps into a monetization and so on. And one of the lucky ones was actually doing some dance and things really. So um, I soon kind of got to grips with actually how to take the dance element to another level and so on with it. But tonight specifically, we're going to be looking at positioning the light, shutter speeds, using flash, using the likes of uh, the different accessories and how to control the light spilling onto the, sub uh, the subject. And we're looking at capturing the moment uh, as well as some other kind of little uh, tips and tricks kind of along the way and things really. So um, as far as um, if you want to just to tune in for two minutes, this is it. Basically, most of my dance photography is using four strip boxes or two strip, strip boxes and two hard lights. I basically run a 9, 10, um, 2 and 3 o'clock light source or a uh, 9, 11, 1 and 3 o'clock light, light source. Um, so the, all the light by design is coming from behind the subject or from the sides of the subject. So even when I say in the nine o'clock position, it's really between the nine and the ten. And when I say the three o'clock position, it's between the two and the three. So slight, so slightly behind them. And the reason being on this is that's where we get all the drama. I'm not really interested in capturing the dancer's face the majority of the time. There are those exceptions which I'll be showing you during the course of uh, today as well. But um, as a rule, I can get away with all the lights being on exactly the same power. So if I'm shooting at F8, everything is metered from the subject one at a time towards the light source to F8 to have the consistency and power. And of course, one of the things, if you're mixing the different mod modifiers through soft boxes and hard light sources, you need to make sure that basically uh, your lights have got enough power on them when they're kind of pushing through a soft box because there can often be one or two layers of diffusion in the way. So uh, we're going to talk about shoot, shooting with powder at the end of today, uh, where we're showing this uh, session. We're showing the whole two days shooting with this couple, in fact. Um, but we'll talk about a little bit how to kind of put it together. Um, remember that I'm running a fine art dance workshop at the end of the year uh, as well. Is it the end of the year or the summer, Jay? I can't uh, remember. Yeah, end of um, August. End of August end of August. It's a two-day one because we're going to be shooting in studio and on location as well with it, or with a fine art twist, but obviously kind of bringing some dance alive. We're going to have multiple dancers. Can't wait for it. Anyway, so um, the key thing to begin with is actually knowing where the light's going to be, and the biggest recipe I use is, as I said, uh, the 9, 10, 1, and, uh, sorry, 9, 10, and 2, and 3, or the 9, 11, 1, and 3. So when we start to use lighting in a more controlled way, a very specific way, I often revert down to just three light sources. So those would be at the uh, 10 o'clock and the 2 o'clock position or the 11 o'clock and the 1 o'clock position. So they're coming in from behind. They usually be gridded to make sure we minimize the actual flare back into camera position. But I'll often run a overhead light as well on a boom arm to kind of give me this down lighting. That 
Overhead light, though, more often than not, is going to be running on a gridded light source uh, to control the light coming down and things, really. So um, what we're seeing here is kind of recipe two um, for my dance photography. So you can see the image on the right-hand side, because she stepped out of the pool of light, uh, the light from above wouldn't hit her. But in fact, because I'm using the Elinchrom system of lights, what I have is that when I'm shooting dance, the back lights that we're seeing here, i.e. the 10 and the 2, are run on one group, and then the overhead light is being used on another group, so I can either choose to actually shoot one or the other or all of them together. So what we're seeing of uh, that last setup there was an image for both of these photographs, okay? So in other words, we've got the light coming in from above. That's the image on the left and the right. Obviously, the dancer's looking up towards the light source on the left-hand side, whereas the image on the right-hand side, her face is in shadow. Obviously, it's not in shot, so that's okay, but we're just lighting the grace of the actual hands and so on. The image on the left-hand side was both set up for uh, a 10 and a 2, as well as the actual over-the-head light. But in this specific photograph, we opted just to shoot the one light. Now, whereas the image on the right-hand side, the light is directly overhead, the image on the left-hand side, where she's leaning back, uh, the actual light is more towards the 3 o'clock high, whereas the basically the image on the right-hand side is the 12 o'clock high. 12 o'clock high refers to vertically perfectly above her coming down, um, whereas the, th uh, I did say three o'clock high, I do apologize, I meant nine o'clock high on the left-hand image. And the reason being on that is that when she leans backwards, she's spilling into that light. If I had it at the three o'clock high, or if I had it at the 12 o'clock high, it would have mean that I would have lit the actual tutu, sorry, I would have lit the, um, uh, uh, the vest, rather than um, the actual face and the arms themselves. So this is seen a little bit more in practice, except the for this light, we're not using the honeycomb above. We're using a deep dish uh, reflector. Uh, don't get that confused with a, uh, a pizza, of course. Uh, speaking about that, that's what we have for tea. Thank you, Jay. Um, but here, the maxi light reflector dish, as it's really known on the Elinchrom system, is being used uh, directly from above. And this is the only light source creating the control and the light. Now, you can't see it, but this light is being used on a poly stand. It's a collapsible, a collapsible boom arm that basically can fold, fold away and, and, and kind of be stored in the smallest of anyone's car trunk. Um, but here, obviously, it's being used ahead. Um, now, naturally, because the hand is reaching into the light source, you're going to have a different exposure at the tip of the finger than you are the face. So let's look at the problems as we uh, kind of come across the images. So the problem with the left-hand image is that, obviously, an, a forward arm, if it's not controlled, will disguise the face. And then, ob obviously, then we kind of start to lose the importance then we start to look at the middle image, and because the dancer's arm is reaching up towards the light source, the exposure is gone, and it's burnt out the detail of the skin, even though the arm closest to camera position is in the perfect position, of course. Whereas in the image on the right-hand side, we're pretty much near perfect here. Yes, I would have liked perhaps a little bit more bend with this front arm, but as it is, the the arm furthest away from camera position is now not reaching into the light, just actually moving itself around the clock in an anti-clockwise direction, where all the beauty of the light is actually spilling onto the actual face itself. Obviously, if I put a grid onto this light, that will give me a totally different look and feel, and it won't allow the light to spill onto the netting. So if you've just got a simple speed light, or you've got a one studio flash, uh, or a battery operated flash, and you're working on location, then this is the kind of image that you want to probably kind of be able to create. Uh, Mark, can I just interrupt quickly? Sorry, mate. Uh, it might be a good Please point. Go. Somebody just asked, and obviously it's something we've talked about a while, uh, but if a quick rundown of why why we're talking about 3 and 12 o'clock, so the clock and compass, I guess. Okay, so if you're not familiar with my clock and compass um, setup, it's a system that I devised for my assistants many, many years ago, so that when we were working either in studio or on, on location or even in an industrial unit, um, we could basically have a very clear, succinct 
uh, positioning of the light as a, st a starting point to any photograph. So if you imagine that the um, dancer or the subject is always in the middle of the clock and the camera position is in the six o'clock position, then basically where the light is positioned around them, uh, it kind of it gives you the position. So when I talk about uh, 12 o'clock high, that's where you're seeing this now. So that means that the light is technically behind the subject in a little way, and then the light is basically falling from above and down. Um, I would go and watch The Complete Guide to Light Part 1, where we talk completely about the clock and compass, and that will kind of unravel a lot of the things as we're going through. Uh, but based on that, though, I'll talk a little bit more about the clock. I've got no clocks in today's webinar. Sorry, Jay, so I, I didn't prepare that. No, it's fine. It's just a couple of people just brought it up in a chat. Do you want to publish the app download link yes, on the yeah. chat panel? Yeah. And then basically they could see that straight away, couldn't they? Yep, I'll go and get it now. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. Okay, so there's our kind of basics on that with it. So then we start to look at freezing the subject. Now, uh, the image on the left-hand side is in my church studio here, um, but I'm using just the daylight itself. And obviously, because she's in full mo motion, she's not only moving a leg, but she's moving the arm, she's moving the detail of the netting as well. Basically, we've got full flow. And I'd have to be around about two thousandths to four thousandths of a, sec a second to pretty much freeze that in natural light, uh, especially as the, sub the subject is running across the scene as well, and I'm not panning, so I keep the actual sharpness of the actual windows themselves. So obviously, as a rule, when we're photographing a moving subject, we usually pan with them. But in this case, of course, I want to kind of keep the um, uh, church windows static and still and allow the movement of her but because the leg is moving the arms are move, moving and we're on a slow shutter speed we start to actually get this lovely blur now by itself that is creativity of course so you don't need to knock it but obviously if we're trying to freeze it we need to understand the importance of shut, shutter speed to be able to actually kind of capture and control no matter what then we're looking at this amazing dancer on the right hand side um, how sad is this? He works in B and Q because he can't um, uh, uh, make enough money now from just being a professional dad, sir. But what is the great thing? He's a great little photographer as well, and I wish he'd do a little bit more photography. Anyway, um, for this image, it's shot in studio, and we're using the flash. Now, even though we're in a quite bright and light studio, um, the flash is the part that is freezing the image. So I'm only photographing about 125th of a second. Um, but we're probably at something like F8 or F11. So the ambient in the scene is almost null and void, but it is the only ambient light in the scene, including the modeling bulb on the flash, that would record any de uh, detail of, um, of movement at all. So if we were photographing on a black background without any or minimal light in the scene, then we're basically, we could even be perfectly sharp even on the likes of a 15th of a sec second, because there'd be no ambient light to really cap uh, capture the, uh, uh, move, uh, the movement of the arm, the body, or the legs as they move through the air. Now, I find the secret to the majority of dance photography is obviously to capture the image at the height of flight. So when the um, subject is at their full kind of position, this dancer on the right can get great height where the uh, dancer on the left uh, can't. It's always better that you photograph from a lower position anyway, because that will make them exa exaggerated in their height of flight. Um, however, the subject is moving from left to right or up and down. So in other words, they're either running in and basically uh, kind of uh, uh, leaping into the shot, or they're going up into the air from a standing position uh, to actually kind of create the height. So as long as you shoot on the height of flight, you can basically freeze the subject even with a slightly slower shutter speed with flash. So <clears throat> what we've got here, the image on the left-hand side, uh, we're mimicking daylight. Um, in fact, what it is, uh, and it's right by our church win uh, window, in fact, and you can see some of the lighting actually on the floor. Um, but because every now and again the clouds come out, we live in the, U the UK, we're used to that, even in summertime. 
basically I've got an LED light, uh, a headler light to actually, uh, which is a focusable spot, which is like a sunlight quality. So it means that I can mix it in with the actual lighting within the church with uh, the window to create the look. Now, because the dancer is still, I don't really have to worry about shutter speed in any way. As it is, I tend to actually like to shoot at around about f4 uh, with this kind of image anyway so i could shoot at a very very high shutter speed no matter what so even if she was move, moving the image on the left then it would be frozen image on the uh, in the in the middle is just shot with a couple of speed lights um but the 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 girl here is literally flying so she's running and jump and jumping through the scene and obviously we've got a lot of ambient light within the scene so if we looked very very close into her we would see that she's not perfectly sharp um, because of the ambient light and the slight movement of the body as she flies through the air. Whereas the image on the right hand side, we're using a very strong flash, um, speed light again, but basically we're overpowering the ambient light more to give more drama to the sky and basically by doing that we're minimizing we're creating darker shadows but we're minimizing the ambient light on her um, so we're actually going to get a slightly uh, uh, a sharper image uh, and if you're really working on location probably uh, to begin with speed light photography is the easiest one to do because you could use the lights of high speed sync to start to use much higher shutter speeds to actually start to freeze the subject more and more so when I'm photographing in studio and I'm looking to actually shoot a high key back background, um, I don't need the uh, 10 and the 2 o'clock lights to actually point towards the dancer. I can light towards the actual wall itself. And then, depending if I want to light them, so in other words, most of the dancer would, would have been a near silhouette if I didn't have any key light running in addition. But there's some natural spill bouncing off white walls, even though our ceilings are high, the floor is white and so on. So it will kind of uh, reflect and bounce some of the lighting into the faces, whether we like it or not. Um, but as far as the look and the feel is concerned, if I don't have any other light running, just those backlights, I'm pretty much going to end up with this kind of image. She's pretty much shooting just, uh, she's around about uh, six feet away from the background. Um, again, uh, e e either as a long zoom lens or basically a prime lens. So I don't want to use the wide angle, otherwise I'm going to pick up more and more flare and things. But as far as the uh, lighting onto the face is concerned, it's only the light bouncing off to the wall that is giving the exposure on, onto the face. So when we start to actually look at these images, now you, you can see how some of the light is spilling more onto the dancer and beginning to give more detail in here. So remember, when you're using big light sources coming in from behind, the closer the dancer is to the, uh, to the wall or to the light source, more of the light will naturally spill and reflect around. So if you're looking to actually create uh, a near kind of silhouette of the dancer, she's going to have to be a long way away from the light source, the white light, to be able to minimize the actual light onto her. Otherwise, we'd have to do more commercial flagging uh, to stop any spillage coming onto her. But in small spaces, it's almost impossible to do. <clears throat> now, when I'm photographing um, the dancer, uh, again, this is that guy that we saw flying through the air to begin with, just doing some strength images before we actually turn this to the vertical, makes him look like he's just hanging onto the wall. Um, anyway, the image on the left-hand side is you using a uh, two lights to light the background, as well as a light source kind of coming in to light him. So you can see here, Basically, there's light on the face and light on the feet. So that means he's being lit by two independent light sources coming in from the nine and the three o'clock position. Whereas the image on the left hand side, the lighting is exactly the same on the feet, but we're actually shoot, shooting with four lights, two to obviously illuminate the background. So the image on the left hand side is four lights. The image on the right hand side is two lights. Okay, so exactly the same um, style like we just saw with him, but now the lights that were pointing towards the background are pointing back towards the dancers again. So we still have four lights. Remember I was saying to you before, nine o'clock, uh, basically this is at 11 o'clock, 
one o'clock and three o'clock positions. Um, and basically, that the only light spilling onto each of their faces are the lights coming in from the, uh, uh, the nine o'clock and the three o'clock position, etc. So again, uh, they're only probably around about a foot apart of each other as, as they kind of jump towards each other. Probably I'd need about five shots to get this. If, if you're lucky and you get it once, brilliant. Um, but then we'll be showing the image to the dancers each one we do so that basically um, they can see the little things that they're going to correct and so on. But remember, the working exposure on all four lights is the same. OK, so um, now that we know that we've talked about the light coming in from behind, we talked that we're either going to use a hard light, which is, in other words, a non-diffuse light source, or we're going to use a soft box, which is a strip box. Um, and we're either going to control it with a grid or we're going to have a softer light source. Now, here we're using a softer light source with grids on the soft boxes. And you can see that even though the two lights, this is only running two lights, even though the light is being controlled, uh, because they're so far away from the, sub uh, the subject, the light is spilling onto the scene itself. Now, obviously, it depends on the kind of image. We usually would want the soft box as close to the subjects as we can, but there are times where we can't do that because we're going to have uh, multiple subjects in the scene or we're going to have them running and jumping into the scene and we don't want to actually do a load of retouching work. So a quick way uh, for me to change the look and feel to this is to either use one light or both lights. So the image on the left-hand side now is just with the one light switched on, okay? And basically, it, so it's only having the 10 o'clock light coming on to the actual subject, and hence we're getting that lovely light down the one side, but, but deep shadow on the right-hand side. But you can see the image on the right-hand side where they're coming, the light is coming in from behind, so it's the 10 and the 2 o'clock position, and it gives a lovely kind of se separation, but a shadowing in the front of the subject. To take this to the next level, um, we can add more lights into the scene by allowing some of the light to spill onto the background. Um, or we can drop a black background down and start to really eliminate any spillage onto the white wall. So by, by design, I usually have a big white wall that I can actually use as my dance stage. And I'll then just bring down seamless pa paper. In this case, this is a four meter black. Uh, to actually drop down, or I'll be using a big cloth background as the main light source. So again, in this case, just two lights being used. And then you can see the, dra uh, the drama now and the, sculpt uh, the sculpting of the young dancer by using just the two lights. So when we're uh, limited in space or we want to maximize the softness of the light, Remember, really what we're trying to do is use a soft box as close to the subject as possible. So both of these images are shot live on a stage during a workshop uh, at the um, Focus on Imaging, which was the pre-photography show many years ago. And basically, we were demonstra uh, demonstrating multiple images in 15 to 20 20 minutes to really kind of get great impact and things. Uh, it, it, it makes me laugh when I see all the demonstrations at the photography shows and they've got this huge stage and basically all they're doing is basically photographing head and shoulders. I can't help but just laugh. Uh, it's different if you're given a, a six foot width by a six foot depth stage to photograph on. That's a different thing altogether. Um, but here we've just got a normal three meter white backdrop you can see how close the lights are to the, da the dancer on the right hand side. And then basically it's just allowing the very soft light to actually control him. If we could have, we'd like to have taken that white backdrop up another five or six feet in case he jumped uh, too high during the shoot so we don't have to actually do much work. But as it is, that is just a two light shot and basically it's pointed directly behind him spilling onto the body. Whereas the image on the right hand side we're using, sorry, on the left hand side where he's clothed, uh, we've got a nine, a, a three o'clock light running, strip box again. But now what we've got, we're lighting the pool of light on the floor from a 10 o'clock position and it's coming in with a, a reflector dish to actually control the light at uh, the light source. You'll see that, that it kind of the setup here as well. So now instead of a strip box running, we've basically got a uh, light on a stick 
which is creating our main light. Now, you can see the problem that you have here if you're using a wide angle lens and the dancer is jumping off stage, basically you're gonna have a lot of retouching to do there as he kind of works through the red backdrop. So what we wanna do is make sure if we can is control the limb to control its kind of spread within the small location, but one of the most important parts is to use a longer lens so we maximize the width of the background instead of using a wide angle lens. So again here, just a two light, light source, one to actually light a little bit of the pool of the floor, a little bit of spillage onto him as well. But in other words, here we've got a one o'clock high light actually coming in and creating all the higher highlight, but a completely shadowed face. Same subject, um, just actually add a little bit of more variety into the scene. Uh, at the end of the day, we shoved him off. He silvered himself up with sil silver paint, wore his silver suit, and my fly mask that I brought, uh, brought in. And basically, um, what, what we've got here is, is looking at how we switch the different lights on and off to naturally create a dynamic um, through either. So in other words, what we're, look, we're looking at here is the subject on the left-hand light in the complete shadow. So basically his body's in shadow, his feet are touching some of the light that is spilling onto the background from the left-hand softbox and uh, he's being completely missed by the other light at the two o'clock position coming in, which is a hard light source. The middle image, of course, where we've moved in back into the hot spot of the light, um, but in fact, it's the flare coming through from behind that we've allowed to fire now, that gives us this massive flare in towards the lens. And then basically the image on the left-hand side is where we're just using the left-hand light to kind of give us all the sculpt in, but now we've basically minimized the power on the light on the right hand side. It's not all about um, big soft soft boxes. Um, this is using the uh, Elinchrom uh, kind of parabolic light, light source, a huge light, very, very deep. And you can see why fashion photographers use it as well as commercial photographers, because this is just the one light source. Uh, it's a shame she was jumping off the background. <laughs> uh, we haven't used this dan uh, dancer before at all. Um, but basically, a uh, great shape, great, a uh, great dynamic. Um, and we had a, a lovely kind of variety of images but we were really testing out the actual parabolic actually for the dancer. And because the light is turned in, in, inward to the uh, big soft, the soft box, the soft box is acting more like an umbrella than it is a, um, a soft box as such, even though there's a cover to go over the front. Um, here, we're just using it as a very, very deep, deep umbrella. Uh, and again, creates great effects. So don't, so don't be afraid of umbrella, just be afraid of the spillage. So when we talk about spillage, we talk about control, and that's the key thing. So strip boxes with grids of my, fav my favorite. Um, this allows me to sculpt the sides and the edge of the, bo the body and gives me enough spill and bounce when I'm kind of allowing the dancer to be freestyle styling like she is here. One of the biggest problems that you've got is when the light is coming in from above and down and it's coming directly onto the so, uh, subject, specifically when the legs are very tight, uh, tightly closed, there's often going to be little spillage of light uh, being able to break through the legs actually onto the face. So again, just, just be aware of this when you're doing the shot and you can kind of really be uh, kind of ahead of the, pro uh, the problem. So, um, Using the two lights here, one from above, 12 o'clock high, strip box, and then the other light is coming in from the nine o'clock low. So this is near near the floor, but it's giving all this lovely kind of sculpt, uh, sculpt in the body. Then when we close or switch the uh, nine o'clock uh, low off, we start to bring a lovely kind of dynamic in towards the image. So left-hand image is both lights, right-hand image is just the light from above. 
And now we can start to see how the, just this one light source really has a, a solid dynamic, shows off all the muscle, all the texture. Now, if you want to minimize the shadowing in the area, what you could use is a massive fill light from behind camera position set to around about two to two and a half stops below the key light position, which will help fill in some of the shadow information, but in a controlled way. If you're photographing through material, uh, material with a dancer, always try and have the lighting coming in from behind and from the sides. So in other words, this, this could be either the shot with a nine and a 10, a two and three, or it could be shot with a 10 and two because the light source is coming back towards position. It's only when we want to put lighting onto the face, of course, we really need, need that either nine or the three o'clock lighting position. So one light to do one job is the key thing in every part of light in anything. So what we've got, obviously, as you can see here, is the one light. Uh, as you look at it, you can see it on the uh, poly stand, which is this boom, the boom arm, and basically gets it nice and high even without going into the boom. But the uh, spill of the, the light, the grids, is controlling to really put a lovely white edge down the subject. If I didn't have the light, though, coming in from the uh, what, uh, 11 o'clock position as well, I wouldn't have the lovely light coming on towards the face. So both of these lights are run in uh, pretty much at the same uh, position, just on the opposite sides of the clock. So in other words, we're looking at a 1 o'clock and an 11 o'clock, with the 1 o'clock being visible in the picture on the left. Okay, so all of these shots then were shot in exactly the same way. When we start to work on location, we start to look perhaps at different modifiers. So this is shot on a dance workshop that I did many, many year, years ago. And because we're using uh, a studio flash on location, we're using the Elencrom ELB flash systems, uh, phenomenal in their power output and their reliability. But we're using two um, maxi light reflector dishes. That's those deep dish reflectors I was on about to before. And you can just about see one just um, here on the left hand side uh, where there's another one up in the air as well. So we're using two lights, um, you are usually on opposite sides. So um, I just talked in the last image about them being on the opposite sides of the clock. Whereas these lights are being used on the, the, the basically straight line of the clock. Uh, so technically the, sub, the subjects in this case are going to be a sandwich. So they're in the middle of the light source, but now we've actually got the likes of an eight o'clock position for the left light. And as you see it here, we've got basically a uh, two o'clock position on the other, other light. So that's where we get the sandwich lighting technique from. So again, I'm not worried about the light being in the scene, because obviously if a digital retouching nowadays, that's pretty much just minutes to actually get rid of that. The key thing is to concentrate on the shape and the dynamic, so it's almost like we're creating a stage. So what we've done here is we've turned the, sub, uh, the subjects uh, against the light, so all the lighting is uh, in, in the sky. We've brought that down around about a stop, and it's a very, very bright day, but we're bringing down the light, uh, the light source, but we're having to maximize the light falling onto the subjects to uh, create the right specularity in the, de uh, the detail. But you can see here that the light is coming from the two direct, uh, directions, because if you look at the girl on the left-hand side here on her leg, you can just see where the light is coming, spilling down the leg. Once more here, the light from two directions. Don't you love a, cloud, a cloudy day? Look at that. It's just phenomenal. Again, straight out of cam uh, camera, that's the key thing. That's where I believe that a photographer shows you what they're meaning to do. So setting out to create and capture a certain kind of look and feel. Um, obviously lucky with the type of clouds that we had on that day, but maximizing it and things really. And then when we just go to um, a different type of setup here, so we've still got our uh, three o'clock light source, three o'clock high, but now the other light has gone to the 
10 o'clock or the 11 o'clock position to just add a little bit of light coming through. Now we're hiding the other light from behind the wall so it's uh, not creating any retouching, so just the image on the right, uh, the light on the right hand side to retouch. So when we work in our location, there's times that we need the light to get big. That's what flash by design is trying to do. It's exploding uh, exion gas, and as it gets uh, explodes, it gets bigger and bigger. So what we do with accessories is try and control it or shape it. Here, all we're using is small reflector dishes to allow the light to just do what it wants. In other words, fly as fast as it can and spread itself to be as big as it wants to be. The further the light is away from the subject, the softness of the light will start to appear. So even though these lights are quite close to the, sub, uh, the subject, if we move them further and further away, we would get more of a softness to the light source itself. So when we meter everything, obviously we're usually looking at the light sources to make sure that we've got a control of aperture, no matter which way the uh, dancer is going to stand or sit or fly. So when we're looking at the shape and the dynamic here, you can see that all really the reflector dishes are doing is controlling the spillage of the light onto the obelisk so we keep this kind of dynamic power. Now remember, these are straight out of camera images. This is just like the JPEG I've shot instead of the raw file. So with no extra work, this is what we're expecting to see. When we start to finish the image though, this is the kind of effect that lighting pattern that we just saw will create. So a very, very dynamic look and feel to the image. Uh, let me just go in and if I can, in PowerPoint, I'll just duplicate that image and I'll just make it much, much bigger so you can see the lighting onto the subject. Can you see that now, Jay? Uh, yes, mate, it's much clearer, yeah. Yeah, so you can see now why we've got the uh, one light on the right-hand side at the three o'clock position, um, closer to the 10, in fact. It's spilling onto the subject, but in fact, it's pointing more towards the camera position. It's only the spill of the light that's actually going on to him. But I need two lights on the left-hand side, one high and one low, to give me the direction to the light source itself. So here, we're up in the shutter speed a little bit. Remember, the ambient light is really not um, having any effect on the flash at all. It's, uh, the ambient light on the exposure will only affect the image when it's equal to or more than the flash that you're, you, you're using. So in other words, if the working exposure in the scene to expose for the sky was 125th at 5.6, the ambient light within the scene would probably still be around about a stop less. Um, but by pushing the exposure up, um, by using more and more flash, overpowering the flash, metering correctly, we can dynamically control an image to get to the kind of the look and the feel that we want. So then we start to work with more advanced equipment. Uh, this is the very first day we had the opportunity a couple of years ago to play with the new ELB 400 and the master controller, which allows us to shoot up to eight thousandths of a sec second. So um, on a day like we're doing here, where we're shooting the dancer, it's also a perfect opportunity to kind of finish off the end of the day with a few kind of test shots of new kit and seeing what we can kind of get out of it. So in fact, we were only given one of the speed heads, the special heads to go on the end of the uh, cable to be able to shoot at a very fast speed. Um, and the other heads were what we had as our kind of uh, own usage. So only the speed head will allow to actually capture at such a high amount consistently. So what we've got here now, it's not directly out of camera, but there is no work going on outside of RAW, except to retouch the flash, okay? So this is shot at 8,000th of a second with studio flash and a normal Canon, Canon camera, but in fact, it's being used with the special um, uh, um, Elinchrom trigger to allow me to shoot at such a high shutter speed. 
I can meter, but I can't get the exact metering control that I'm used to as far as the um, um, uh, the normal kind of use of flash is concerned. So again, as far as when we're looking to use flash, when you're using new equipment for the first time, we've got to be prepared to actually make mistakes. Um, but I promise you, the image that we're using is, is exactly what we're seeing here. And all we've done is in the post-production is in the raw to actually bring it all down and control. Uh, so again, this gives us these kind of amazing images, but we're having to retouch the flash out. So the flash on the left-hand side is basically only power uh, uh, being fired through luck <laughs> rather than control because this is the old um, uh, ELB flash head and I don't even know how it was firing some, some of the time. So remember, we only had the one head that was this new specific speed head. So where possible, I'm either going to use the sun as a light source, as a, a secondary light source, um, or to actually can be completely eliminated or used in the scene. So here, in fact, we're using uh, the sun as a separation light, as you can see, and then we're using a flash on the right-hand side as our next light, light source. So very strong in its kind of control and use. But again, what we're trying to do is make sure that we're mimicking and creating dynamic images uh, within the actual scene. Window light, again, um, one will be uh, to kind of give us a near silhouette effect. When we expose for the skin towards camera position, that will give us a, a, a brighter exposure as such. But then, of course, we're more likely to blur the feet and the jump as we're doing it and things, really. When we're using the light sword, this is just all natural light at this point. We meet in from the face towards the light source to create our dynamic, and the same with the actual feet here. Uh, when we work in on location, as I said, we're always working from the light source towards the uh, uh, sorry, the meter towards the light source as our main exposure, so towards the sun, in exactly the same way as we would work uh, when we're uh, looking to use a studio flash within, within a scene. So we've got to actually ima imagine what we're trying to uh, create um, each step of the, uh, the way. Otherwise, all we ever do is end up um, kind of doing this, uh, 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 a chimping on the back of the camera, you need to understand the recipes, otherwise you're basically never gonna get a consistent quality. So I mentioned about working with pow powder. Uh, by design, uh, the dan dancers would have a small amount of powder in their hand. There's times where we've got secondary powder being thrown in. Um, to control, but you can see here why we're running the 9, 10, uh, 2, and 3 o'clock light, light in to get all this drama coming in from the background. Exactly the same when we're working with secondary sub, uh, subjects, um, we can create the light source. So here you, you can see uh, the shot in its fullest. Um, again, the, type, the timing of the dancers is essential for us. Probably got to shoot, shoot this five or six times. I believe you can watch this on the Academy, Jay, yeah? You can, mate. Yes, indeed. Perhaps you want to post post the link. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you get a chance. Um, but all of these images are really designed to actually kind of the same way. Light the subjects from different directions if they're going to face towards each other. And then use the light in the opposing corners to actually add the accent light around the body to sculpt it. If uh, you're... Mate, I think you paused the screen, sorry. Oh, I did. I apologize, mate. Sorry, sorry. And you just said yes. Okay, so... Sorry. So this is the shot that we're discussing, yeah? So this is where the powder, there's some in each hand of the dancer, and as they da uh, they jump up, they release the powder, uh, the powder as well. And... Uh, what we've got here is somebody else on the right hand side throwing in a handful of powder as well just to actually add an extra amount into the mix um, and then the same here when we're using the two subjects 
lighting set of exactly the same that are run about two feet away from each other so they don't clash. Um, obviously, they're both jump, jumping up at this point. That's the full image where we can see all the lights in the position, so you can see how little is being done. When they're facing towards each other, that's where, as I said to you, the lights will uh, create the lighting onto the face. And then when we start to use gels onto the background, that can really start to bring a little bit almost surreal element in towards the photograph. So here we've got a red gel and we've got a blue, a blue gel. Remember that red will eat up a slightly more amount of the flash than the actual uh, blue, uh, the blue gel was. So you might need to actually change your power settings up and down. But in this case, we're just using the two light source sources. The, pow the powder is still in the air, you, uh, you can see it. it. Took us an age to actually clean, uh, clean up the place, but well worth it. Um, but we get a real kind of variety of images in a very short time when we're using the powder. And we finished. Jay, anything you want to chat about? Yeah, sorry mate, I was just looking for the link for that film, which I've just found, so I'm gonna post that in there. Um, I th really early on was a question, but I think you've answered it already. It was right back at the first lighting setup, and it, the question was, you were talking about the four lights, but were they high speed in any way? But that was the studio lights, wasn't it? Uh, there, there's only the high speed when I med mentioned they were high speed. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, what powder is it? Talcum powder, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, yeah. That's We needed it fine. But it, we basically found it about a year late, later, Jay, didn't we? Oh, mate, it was just, I was about to say, actually, when you started talking about it, please, 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 well, if you do it, it's great, but you'll be cleaning it up. For, we thought the place was clean. And then when, when we actually moved from the old studio to this one, and we got the stuff out of storage, we were still finding layers of talcum powder all over the light industry. So, And your original plan, if I remember correctly, was either coloured powder paint or That's possibly. the one we use by design is colour powder paint because it's heavier and it doesn't go as dispersed. And you also at one point were thinking about glitter, weren't you, I think? Glitter was would have been a stupid idea. Well, yes, it was. But it was your idea and we were looking for big vats of glitter at one point. If I remember. Yeah, I know. Uh, it was Sam's idea to use the talc. It was my idea to use the coloured paint and I don't know why I lost. Uh, anyway. But yeah, but I'm glad we didn't do glitter because, like you said, it was a long time. Uh, would you get a similar effect with a smoke machine? That's a good question. I suppose. Uh, um, yeah, you know, so um, if you can get hold of safe hand flares and you can use them uh, on the lo in the location that you're photographing, yes, a, a flare will actually give you a very kind of cool look. Um, you don't have to have so much powder. We were using quite a lot and shooting quite fast because obviously we were trying to create quite a lot of film for the Academy at the time. Um, but a smoke, a smoke machine will give you a different effect, of course, because it's more like smog and fog. Um, oh, somebody was saying that there's quite a nice effect if, you, if they've got long hair and they're not opposed to asthma to put it in their hair and then have them flick the hair back. So something there but uh we're not doing powder anyway not in the new studio debbie will kill you um so it's not we like... are on location but don't oh. tell anybody okay yeah well okay I won't end of day it. end of day one on oh. locate a location of the dance yeah i won't tell any of the hundred odd so people that are online with us that we're doing that because it's a secret. don't tell them it's obviously a secret just don't um, tell the dancers because the mess is insane that's right we'll probably be at the beach so they can just jump in and, and clear up it looked like we dropped a bag of coke i think by the time we finished anyway <laughs> um so oh this is a good question okay so are you just getting one shot per dance move due to the recycling of the flash uh, yeah, I always, uh, again, I, I shoot like a film photographer still, yeah? So I don't need to shoot 10 or 12 images at once. I'm shooting on the height of flight and bang. So it's, it's, the, it's the best way um, to train yourself in just relying on a camera go blah, 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 blah. Yes, the uh, Elinchrom ELCs will allow it to actually strobe and actually shoot at a very high shutter speed and shoot in a very high uh, recycle, recycle time. Um, but basically, I still old fashioned and I basically shoot as is. Uh, brilliant, mate. I think we're there. The only other questions, well, a few people have asked, uh, they missed the beginning. Yes, the recording will be on the Academy next week, so you better catch up with that and all of the other recordings. I'm just seeing if I've missed any of the questions. Uh, no, we're good, mate. All done.
Brill. So um, there, there is so much more we could talk about the dance photography and things. Perhaps we'll bring another part in uh, late, uh, later on. Um, but I would definitely go and watch uh, some of those films on the Academy that you've just seen us talk uh, talk about. Uh, I think with the same couple, we shot for two days with them, Jay, didn't we? Yeah, and, well, when uh, I did the search then, um, the easiest thing to do, even though I've shared the link to the powder film, is that if you go into the search facility in the films and put in dance, um, well, you'll have a huge variety there, not just uh, pretty much all the films that you've taken images from today are there, actually. But, yeah, with um, uh, Dan, wasn't it? I don't remember his partner's name, but Dan, uh, yeah, was with us for two days. and we. They, we you know, the great, the great thing about dads is they just actually don't stop. And they keep going and going and going. We shot on location with them. We shot street dance with them. We shot ballet in the middle of the street, didn't we? We, we, we brought a town to a standstill, in fact, um, just just by photographing. We did basic animation. God, I miss that floor, though. The dancers don't because the bloody splin, uh, splinters on it. Anyway. Oh, yeah. But Dan was the fly as well, wasn't he? Was Dan the fly? Dan, uh, Dan was the fly. That was the first time we basically used Dan, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's yeah. He came down several times. He was great, wasn't he? And as yeah, you said good. earlier, he's the and he's a great photographer as well, Phil. That's right. Dad, yeah. His dad's yeah. a really good. That's right. Good photographer. Great. Uh, no, we're all done, mate. That's good. I've just got a few reminders, but unless there's anything you want to finish with. So what are we doing on the next one? I've forgotten. Uh, we're doing flash uh, on location. Flash on location. Yep. Okay, so uh, we might use a few of the images that we've seen tonight again, but it'll be a different kind of group and we'll be bringing back the clocks as well. Brilliant. And I think there was an element when we were chatting, um, looking at the speed light on that as well, wasn't there? It is a lot of speed light stuff, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, mate, I'm going to rub the screen back, but thanks again for another great night. And that's coming through the, uh, um, when is part eight? Oh, well, that's April the 4th just about to share that with you but you beat me to it so there we go the april the thursday april the fourth is the next sec is the next one so it'll be next next thursday